moment a 15-year-old boy lifts a truck off his father, saving his life. And starting with a hero story here at 11, this man credited with saving three lives, including his own, he was actually able to lift a vehicle off of a state trooper. This is nuts. In 2019, 16-year-old Zach Clark lifts a car off his neighbor after it slips off a jack. Incredible, right? But this isn't a one-off because in 2014, Robert Renning bent open a truck door with his bare hands to save a man from a fire. And in 1988, Warren Amaral lifts part of a helicopter to free a trapped pilot. How are these feats of seeming superhuman strength even possible? And the question is, do we all possess this superhuman ability? Well, let's find out. When we think of strength, we think of muscles. Whether you're a gym goer or not, you have roughly 650 muscles. The smallest one is in your ear, the largest is your gluteus maximus. But here's the thing, muscles alone aren't enough. Without the nervous system sending electrical signals, muscles are, well, fairly useless. And it's the connection between muscles, the nervous system and the endocrine system that is the key to understanding superhuman strength. Now let me give you a quick lesson on the nervous system. You've got the central nervous system, which is made up of the brain, our central command center. It's like the CPU in a computer. And then there's the spinal cord, which is like a communication superhighway between the brain and the body. Which leads me to the other part of the nervous system called the peripheral nervous system, which carries sensory signals from the body to the brain and motor signals from the brain to the muscles and glands of the endocrine or the hormone hormone system. The part of the nervous system responsible for motor signals, which are responsible for muscle control, are further divided into two parts. One, the somatic nervous system, which controls voluntary movement, and two, the autonomic nervous system, which controls functions not under our conscious control, like our heartbeat and our breathing. This autonomic nervous system is further broken down into two parts. One, the sympathetic nervous system, responsible for our fight-flight responses. And two, the parasympathetic nervous system, responsible for resting and digesting. Now, to help us understand our capacity for superhuman strength, we need to look at our ancestors. Early humans faced predators constantly. Their survival depended on our fight-flight response controlled, as I said, by the part of the nervous system that is not under our conscious control, the sympathetic nervous system. So when a predator posed a threat to a caveman, the part of the brain responsible for detecting danger, the amygdala, sends a message to the brain's hypothalamus, which activates the sympathetic nervous system, and this triggers a series of immediate physiological changes, such as increased heart rate, a rising blood pressure, dilated pupils in the eyes and energy release into the bloodstream. The hypothalamus also triggers the pituitary gland in the brain to stimulate the adrenal glands, which are, again, a part of the hormone system known as the endocrine system. This leads to the release of adrenaline or epinephrine and cortisol, hormones that promote the fight or flight response by providing energy and maintaining alertness. But here's the big question. Could this survival mechanism really make you strong enough to lift a car? we need to look at the role of adrenaline. The release of adrenaline is really key to understanding where our superhuman strength comes from. Released during stress, adrenaline floods your muscles with energy, crucially increasing strength beyond normal levels. It also blocks pain, which we can all relate to. How often have you hurt yourself and not realized until later on? Well, that's adrenaline at work. But how does it do this? Well, it reduces the pain-sensing activity of neurons in the spinal cord and peripheral nervous system. Plus, it increases the release of natural painkillers called endorphins, which bind to opioid receptors and dampen pain signals. Even weightlifters hack evolution and their nervous system when they're lifting heavy weights, because they use smelling salts, which are made of ammonium carbonate, that release ammonium that, when breathed in, triggers a host of nervous system responses like increased heart rate, a spike in adrenaline, and a reduction in pain perception. Now, did you know that it takes between 300 and 400 milliseconds for you to blink, but the human body reacts to a threat much faster? In fact, in as little as 150 to 200 milliseconds, depending on the nature of the threat and the complexity of the response. Here's a breakdown of what that looks like. The detection phase. 
it takes us between 10 and 50 milliseconds to detect a threat. We do this with our eyes, ears, or skin. Interestingly, a visual threat is detected in 30 to 50 milliseconds, while an auditory threat is detected much more quickly in 10 to 20 milliseconds. This has to do with the rate of transmission of the stimulus. Sound waves are detected by hair cells in the cochlea of the inner ear and are converted into electrical signals. These signals travel via the auditory nerve directly to the brain stem and then to the auditory cortex in the brain. Auditory pathways reach the brain stem directly, but in the case of visual signals, light is detected by photoreceptors in the retina and the signal undergoes multiple changes before traveling via the optic nerve to the brain. When auditory or visual signals reach the brain, they are processed, which takes between 50 and 100 milliseconds. The visual signal requires additional processing in the brain's thalamus and visual cortex, and this leads to slightly longer processing time. On top of this, hearing is omnidirectional, meaning sounds can be detected from all directions, even in the dark or when the source is out of sight. This makes the auditory system crucial for detecting hidden or distant threats. While vision is line of sight dependent, visual threats require the object to be within the field of view, which may not always be immediate. And then lastly comes motor response activation, which is where the motor cortex in the brain sends signals via the spinal cord to the motor neurons, which activates the muscles, and this takes between 30 and 50 milliseconds. And then automatic responses, like withdrawing your hand from a flame, can bypass the brain for even faster response times of fewer than 30 milliseconds. So a simple reaction like catching a ball takes around 150 milliseconds. A more complex decision-making reaction like slamming the brakes of a car can take up to 200 milliseconds or even longer. Angela Cavallo in 1982 lifted a Chevy Impala off her son after it collapsed on him. It made headlines across the world. Moments like this are not just random. They are part of a survival toolkit evolution gave us. If we didn't possess this survival toolkit, our ancestors would not have responded to the predator, and human beings would quickly have died out. But these acts of superhuman strength do come at a cost, and here's why that's a good thing. You see, superhuman strength is not limitless. The body runs out of energy fast. Glycogen stores, primarily found in the liver and the muscles, and that are used for energy, will deplete very quickly. Oxygen debt builds up and lactic acid fatigues the muscles. This evolutionary mechanism was designed for short bursts of intense activity, not sustained effort. It was designed to get us out of dangerous situations very quickly, the demands of which leave us mentally, emotionally and physically exhausted and so cannot be sustained for any longer than several seconds. These incredible feats of superhuman strength of lifting cars and bending doors with your bare hands are evolutionary remnants of our ancient ancestors' survival instincts. But it's important to note that we can't necessarily summon this strength on demand because it seems you must reach a certain threshold of threat before the nervous system is sufficiently triggered for this strength to be facilitated. And even then, there's no guarantee you'll be able to lift a Chevy Impala. But the amazing thing about how your brain has evolved and developed your natural instincts is that most of the time they kick in in a fraction of a second. And so if you ever find yourself in a position where you're lifting a car, trust me, you'll be doing so before you've even had time to think about it. Although I can't quite guarantee you'll be able to match the feet of Game of Thrones star Hafor Bjorsson, who lifted a colossal 501 kilos or 1100 pounds in 2020, setting a new deadlift world record. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, check out this other video right up here.